Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another Sandbox live stream. My name is Mike Washburn. I'm the Director of Engagement for Participate. Uh, joined, I guess, one last time, we can say that, with uh, by, by Steve Isaacs. He, uh, he's been a, an amazing co-host with me for the, the last few months, um, but will no longer be moving on to some other things. Um, but uh, we're excited to listen. The, this is always fun talking to Steve. I I think I, Steve, I could talk to you about game design all day. You know, this is good stuff for sure. For sure, this is our uh, this is our jam. This is as they say, as they say. Um, as always, we want to remind you all to um, to check out the community on Participate. Um, that's where you can kind of keep up to speed on everything that's going on. Uh, join the conversation, uh, learn with and from each other. There is a lot of stuff there, um, and and it's all it's all really exciting. It's all really exciting stuff, including uh, you know a brand new Sandbox 101 educator course that you can join. To kind of get just the the 101 feel for how to use um, all of the things that the sandbox offers, and then of course the the highlight is this game maker game studio high school curriculum that we have um, been releasing in bits and pieces. Um, you know, once every two weeks, a new course comes out, a new module comes out. Um, we released uh, the introduction and the process journal slash you know, reflection um, course last time we were with you. And today, uh, in a few minutes, we're going to be talking about brainstorming. We're going to actually get right into the game maker and take a look around and come up with some ideas. We're going to talk about, you know, how Steve um, may have encouraged his students to brainstorm and some of the tools that were being used there. And then we're going to use a tool that I am slowly becoming familiar with called uh, called Miro to to dig into my own brainstorm for my own game. So that is exciting. Um, Steve, there's a lot of really new kind of stuff that has come out um, in addition to the in addition to the course. And we actually, I, I wanted to kick this stream off by highlighting that the new Game Maker uh, version 0.4 um, is out now. And, and we wanted to play for you uh, a bit of a trailer uh, yeah. for that. So, uh, and, and yeah. I'll say, if, if I could, just right before you show the trailer, yeah. um, my students have already expressed their appreciation for 0.4 and some of the features that we'll see what the... Uh, trailer shows and I'll share a little bit of their thoughts as well. Awesome. Take a look.
So how about that? Pretty cool stuff there for sure. Um, um, so pretty so wild. Pretty wild. I'm super intrigued by the quest system. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things that that my students really appreciated. So it's been interesting working with my students now. You know, as as the sandbox is quick, you know, to to share. They're actually this is like a very early release, right? Like this is the alpha version. Um, so my kids have been going through a few of those iterations and. The most recent, or one of the things that's helped them a lot is the most recent, this point four version has, um, allows students to, uh, to save to the cloud. So what my kids were doing, and they had to find a pretty crafty way to do it in the past, they would have to figure out a way to export their game, share it, know where to put it on another computer and stuff. Now, at least it's in the cloud. So that kind of helps that cause quite a bit. Um, also for, you know, these, um, remote, I, I don't know if other people are working, dealing with the hybrid learning environment like I am, but having kids have to save and export their work and transport it between school and home all the time is quite a challenge. Um, so this helps that a lot. So that's one of the things my kids really appreciated. Awesome. I want to, uh, yeah, let's let's get into the uh, a bit of a quick rundown on the brainstorming lesson. Um, uh, that looks cool. It looks like an advanced Minecraft adventure game maker. I think that that's almost a little bit about what they're going for. So so welcome welcome to the stream. And I think you're dead on. It is it does look cool. I'm pretty excited to make my own game in it. I've I've actually never made. I have made bits and pieces of a bunch of different games as I've taught game design, mm -hmm. but I'll have to admit I've actually never made like a uh, like a game the way that I've like like a full. You know what I mean? Like I've made yeah, vertical slices. I've made yep. like mini games. I've made tons of mini games in the past, um, but I've never made like a game like a full game like I intend to make here. So. Right. So I, I'm excited. Uh, I'm a little nervous. I won't lie. Um, now, and we'll see what happens. Coming up later this month, Mike, which might even inspire you further, is the Global Game Jam. So oh I wonder boy. if you meet for sandbox folks to uh, engage in that weekend and, you know, bang something out and start to, to prototype at least in the weekend. That would be interesting. That would be cool. So, uh, as with every lesson in this high school curriculum, they are as uh, aligned to ISTE and CSTA standards. You can see the standards that this lesson is related to are listed right at the top. Um, you're going to get a sense of what we're looking for students to be able to do by the time they're done this lesson. Um, be able to do an extensive brainstorm that... that considers all kind of the development options for making a game um you're you're going to um you know have your students asking questions uh, about you know tools and ideas for um brainstorming how they brainstorm the best um I, I, as with every lesson i want to encourage students to use the tool that's most comfortable for them, even though I'll be honest, I'm not necessarily doing that right now because I do want to share with you this really cool tool. Um, so in the name of kind of sharing something that's new and to be honest, something that was never around when I was teaching, at least not in this way. Um, I, I, I tell you in, in, in group environments, did you, You've had students make games in in groups, right? All the time. Yeah. Because so I think it's I, you know very important actually. Yeah, yeah, totally. So uh, I can imagine um in group environments the tool that I'm going to use for my brainstorm and Steve is actually in it right now already. It's a collaborative tool called Miro. Um uh it's 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 quite powerful and and the collaborative opportunities are are endless with it, which is awesome. Um, we, we give you a chance to teach, you know, about what, you know, brainstorming should be in, in my mind, brainstorming should be more like a, I call it a brain dump. 
Um, you know, go for quantity. Come up with as many ideas as possible, especially in group environments. There's some kind of norms or rules you should sort of follow. And, and you know, one of them being to avoid criticism. Um, no idea should be off the table in a brainstorm. Um, you know, and and welcoming unusual ideas is always good. Uh, it's always good to just, you know, throw everything out there. I do want to focus on these six aspects of game design. So when I get to my Miro board, I'm going to actually fill in the, the first six kind of sections with story, character, plot, sound, settings, and graphics. And setting and graphics so that I can kind of frame the way I'm thinking about my game um, and, and be, be ready to add some information um, and ideas. And then, you know, maybe ideas can be, um, you know, combined or create new ideas. And certainly in a group environment, you want students to, um, to talk. I think Steve, right? I think talking is good in this talking case. Talking is very good. Right. Very, it's very important. <laughs> Communication. So that eventually you come up with ideas together that students are learning and working together. And um, as always, um, in my mind, uh, you know, the, the, the whole point of the journal or the reflection lesson um, was to prepare students for the idea of 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 reflecting or thinking back on every step of this process um so that means of course um you know using their their journal or their reflection at the end of the lesson um or at the end of the activity so at the end of the assignment if if this is something that's being turned in um so that you know we have a a, a documented kind of thought process about what they've done. Um, I, I added, we've added some, some rubrics, um, some kind of, um, you know, resources for you to assess this. As always, because this is a formative assessment, you don't necessarily have to grade it, but you can. And, you know, I did. Um, I, and I don't know, I, I assume you graded your brainstorms or, or design documents uh, as well, Steve. Yeah, yeah, I am. Um, oh, you did I, the XP thing, right? With uh, I do. yeah. So what I do, I mean, just because I think it's a, a I, it's the way that I've turned towards in grading. What I do is I have the expectations. I give examples of exemplars, and then if when the students hand them in, I give feedback so that they have the opportunity to kind of continue to iterate or improve upon whatever the assignment is. So in this case, with the design document, if there are things that I need more elaboration on, I'll give them that feedback, and then they'll you know, continue to work on that and then submit it. And in my case, the ultimately they receive, I kind of moved to a little bit of a different system where there's a base experience points that, you know, that is a little easier to achieve, and then many kids can get double experience points for, you know, for exceeding expectations kind of thing. Um, you know, and I certainly have some I could share a little bit of that layout of what design documents in my class look like and all of that. Awesome. That's cool. Um, one of the other, uh, you know, in, in terms of, uh, you know, group brainstorming, I did add a, we did add a video here at the end um, on, on how to brainstorm as a group um, and, and take a look at it because I think it's, it's really, really quite good. Um, let's talk about tools um let's talk about ideas for for how to to actually like what you what you would use what have you used in the past steve to um for your students to brainstorm with so it's funny if we go way past and this is very similar to this tool miro and uh becky said my audio was low i hope yeah i, I see it okay um the uh so something very similar to this we used to use, and some other educators who've been around for a while will remember Inspiration. Um, that's a great web diagramming tool. Um, one interesting, interesting thing, too, is that if you use Twine, Twine allows you to write your story in a web diagram brain map format, and then actually the story's already there to convert it into a game. 
Um, the thing that I turn to most is a design document where I give kids a template. Um, and uh, again, you know, I have that available where it just guides the kids into the different types of things. Now, similarly with this tool, Miro, we could do the same and come up with subtopics that we want kids to focus on. So like in some of these type something boxes, we could put like, you know, storyline or backstory. That's one of the things that I have kids focus on. Um, things like that totally but i could yeah all of that um and i get into yeah so yeah twine twine's cool twine's very cool yeah so i thought you know what i would do is put put my main kind of headers here character hair extra maybe multiple characters yeah, characters, definitely. <laughs> I, I often um, break that down, too. So I have, like, you know, there's playable characters, there's non-playable characters, there's bosses, that sort of thing. Right. Oh, can you add that to your to the to the character yeah, let, part? Let, yeah, let me get in there. I, I got this tool up and running. I got to find it because I'm looking at yours. Here we go. Yep. Oh, that's <laughs> interesting, though, because – oh, there we go. I got it. There was a little bit of a tag piece. So now I got to say that I do a little plus sign here. Yeah. I'm gonna do um setting uh There we go. And graphics. And so it, whether they're under characters or somewhere separate, I, I often also do like what I would consider enemies and maybe even off of enemies we can go and choose bosses because the bosses are a little bit of a different entity. Although, you know what, it's weird because if I do this, that's what I was afraid that was going to do because I don't know that I want to do that. Um, Ooh, bosses. I don't want that. I'll do bosses as a separate thing off of characters for now. I mean, they're kind of a sub of an, of an enemy, but I'm just not entirely sure with this tool if it would come across the way I'm thinking, so I'll keep it as a separate thing. Um, setting graphics. I get into, you have sound there. I, um, I like to add level descriptions. I like to think about, oh, here we go. Let's do a big plus here. So, um, oops. Cool. Playable characters. And sometimes that might be just the one main character, but sometimes it could be if it's a multiplayer game or if you have choices, like maybe you can choose a mage or a fighter or a, you know, like, so there's that possibility. Right. Um, and and maybe with playable characters or the main character, there is, um, you know, the main character choice i wonder if you can choose characters mm. you mean specifically in the sandbox or yeah in, yeah as, I'd be a, as an idea in... though for your game you certainly could and you know and, and that's where it gets creative too like you certainly i'm always of the mind that if you want to do that there's a way you just have to figure out how um in the tools to do it but i would think mm. so walk through this door if you want to be a mage and walk through this door if you want to be a in the chat Becky says mini bosses. So, I, I well, like yeah, that. And, and where you put so um Becky, what I love is you have character abilities. So when I have kids talk about their characters, I do have them talk about the description of that character. So I always talk about it like talk about it like developing, you know, like we watch these sitcoms and like you watch Seinfeld, right? And those characters have been so well developed because they have different, you know, attributes and such. So I try to get my kids to think that way. You know, and some of that's their physical um, appearance, their abilities, their personality, their, you know, all those kinds of things. That's an interesting idea, the idea of main character, unique main character attributes. So, you know, maybe you, if you can, if you, if we can set up a mechanic for main characters and choosing a main character right off the start of the game maybe they have like a unique set of skills for each main one so maybe one is like a a, a warrior and maybe one is like a, a ranger and maybe one is like a mage or something like that 
Um, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That would be pretty cool. And again, and what's interesting about this, too, from the brainstorming standpoint, Mike, is I always have kids, like, I, I try to have them not feel limited. Like, my kids love to ask, can I do this in Minecraft? Can I do this in this tool? Can I do this in Sandbox? I'm like, you know what? Build it out. Your design document, the brainstorming is just that. It's brainstorming. When you build your game, it's going to change dramatically, and that's part of the process. But having this as a, you know, as your ideas going in gives you, you know, the guidance or the direction that you need to get started. Um, Because, like, what kids often want to do is they want to spend, they want to use this as a reason to get right into the tool and be like, start creating their game, um, which often, you know, I mean, learning and playing around with the tool, creating a minimal viable product is all fine. But when it comes to really planning your game, it is best to do a lot of that outside of the game environment and just let your mind run, run wild. And kids then figure out how to do some of the things that they wanted to do or they change their their thoughts around that. Grandma Deb is here. Hello, Grandma Deb. Oh, personality might be interesting too. And certainly, um, certainly a lot of these archetype um, character types have kind of pretty um um also kind of stereotypical personalities the warrior is a gruff type mm-hmm. person where the mage is probably a little more laid back uh the ranger and the rogue are a little more sly so maybe 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 that is something we we you know I lean into a little bit that might yeah. be fun now the interesting thing i wonder about this tool is what can you if oh see how there's also look at this if i right click you're not looking at this but you can like add comments so it gives you a lot of opportunity to say like let's say i'm talking about one of the characters and i want to add all the information that i want in there i mean there are ways with this tool to do that so that i can have this cleanish looking brainstorm and then also get more deeper notes behind it you know which i think is important see for me like I would have, you know, my kids would have multiple levels. So there might be one that's, um, you know, um, you know, um, house entrance. Let's say it's a, you know, a uh, haunted house, right? Then there might be the um, attic. Scary things happen in attics and basements, right? Basement. That's what they say. And. <laughs> And and Mike likes to make sure we have in the game the washroom. The washroom. God. Um, so you keep um adding stuff here and also you can you can watch on my screen. I'm gonna jump into the game maker for a second. Mm-hmm. And and I'm gonna I, I thought a cool way to kind of get us a little bit inspired for this would be to take a look at some of these themes yeah so i'm gonna look at the i'm gonna look at the lake i'm gonna call it lake theme just so i can see it and this we're gonna another, oh, i'm sorry go ahead I was say this is another difference of this version just so people know you see how that grid had like now it's about a five by five or six by six i think it used to be a two by two or three by three at the largest so it seems like they've provided larger starting maps and things look at that so this is very much just uh this is a lake. Yeah, it is a lake, just like they told you. Exactly as they said it would be. <laughs> Maybe we could um have a little bit of an underwater adventure here. Ooh. Oh now Grandma Deb has no sound. I hope it's not us, but I don't think it is. I don't think it is. An underwater adventure. I wonder I wonder what the um okay so it, it it I can't remember if there's a spot for mechanics if we if I have a spot for mechanics in the in the game mechanics I I do you could do like it in level that. yeah level um, descriptions might be it could be I I do certain things like that separate I also do like scoring mechanism I do win lose scenarios and things like that because I think all that's pretty important um but one of the things might be. You know, um, if there's mechanics for like water breathing underwater, um, you know, coming up for air, uh, stuff like that. I wonder. I wonder if there's there's room for that. That might be interesting. 
for what you say? I'm sorry. So breathing underwater um, yeah. and coming up mm. for air. Right. Uh, right. Maybe you lose health if you're underwater for a certain amount of time. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Like like Minecraft or there. I mean, or the real life. <laughs> Yeah, like real life. <laughs> I like suppose. World, world, of War, world of Warcraft is like real life too, right? World of Warcraft is not, but I understand what you're saying. Let's uh, let's take That's a look at. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to see how uh, flexible this. Oh, see, there's something called notes. You can put notes in too to set up in this tool. Thanks. All right, I'm gonna open so up just... the desert. But I wonder though, is, can you adjust the size of these text boxes or anything? Because I'd like to, like, if I write a lot of text, is it just gonna keep going off the screen here? I'm not sure. I haven't used Miro very much. I actually yeah. joked about it in, uh, in in Slack that uh, that I'm gonna use Miro for this, and I don't know what really what I'm doing. So, <laughs> as uh, as our friend Brad Shreffler says, productive struggle. Yep. I see how it's working a little bit more. All right. Um, so we have desert. We have a desert. So there's lots of really interesting, like, block types and block kind of colors. Oh, it did, it did wrap eventually. Yeah. Which is cool. There's, like, there's lava. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, if you hit your inventory, too, there's a whole lot. I think it's I get you all the other blocks that you can play around with. So you can have, like, depending on how well you were, how good you were at designing levels, at, le like, at like, yeah, level design, you could you could design, like, a really cool, like, fiery lava like zone in your game right mm -hmm. um that had like fire and lava and like statues with dragons and <laughs> <laughs> speaking to it to world of warcraft influences yeah. i suppose well now that's the good question too because you're starting to think about what your game i mean clearly we're going in the rpg direction once we started adding these warriors mages and whatnot um so no, yeah, well, maybe. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, RPG ish. It could be a, you know, it could be an adventure. It could be so many things. But we're kind of. I'm just seeing where you're. We're starting to, you know, to. to I think. Evolve I, to. I think it's my wheelhouse. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> I sort of. I think I sort of started it when I said, "Oh, like maybe you could choose a character, like a warrior, a mage, or whatever." That might have started something. I don't know. Choose Which your destiny. Okay. I, I'm I'm kind of low key obsessed with like putting this lava in the holes in the ground. <laughs> I think it'd be cool to like it'd be cool to draw influence from like I mean so one of the things that I used to talk to my students about a lot was drawing influence from the the games that they like. Not not copying necessarily no, no, exactly the games do. that they like. But they're gonna make, you know, they're gonna make better games, and they're gonna be more engaged in the process yeah. if they make something that they would want to play, and not necessarily cool. something that I'm, you know, want, if not necessarily something they think I'm wanting them to play. Right. Well, that's interesting because that's always been my thing with. I mean, like I teach game design, right? So a lot of teachers use games and game design to provide opportunities for kids to create a game but to maybe um demonstrate understanding of you know of of curriculum related content which is fine but in my case i felt like because i'm teaching game design and i want kids to learn those skills it was very important to me to make it relevant and meaningful and like you say kids are i mean we are that's what we're inspired by right and that's what our frame of reference is and I have kids play games and review games first, so they're definitely going to draw. And quite honestly, um, all the games that we play share, or not all of them, I mean, like, games share mechanics with other games, and genres of games are born out of that, right? So it would be kind of silly to think that 
we weren't going to take ideas from ooh from other games, right? I don't like Maximilian. <laughs> and reflecting <laughs> on how they would improve it. Yep, that's true too. And Becky, something I also love having kids do is to modify. Um, well, especially with like tabletop and card games, is to take a, a game that they're familiar with and then modify it. Um, but all of those things are great ideas for, and the you know improve upon or even the idea just of what mechanics would you change or add, which again is how I think these genres of games evolve. Right, like so many games that we see, it's like like you know they're so similar and yet they have one unique mechanic that sets it apart from the others sure oh you see the door is slightly ajar and wonder inside slight fog i wonder if there's fog mm. interesting interesting so i do love the idea of making different levels based on things that i am like like, like now that I'm really kind of leaning that way, almost like, because I am playing a lot of World of Warcraft, as you know. Mm, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and so maybe it's like, maybe it's like creating kind of mini replica sort of versions of a couple different, because the, the, the land in World of Warcraft is pretty diverse, right? Yes. And and there's lots of different, you know, types and styles yeah. and, like... Now, <laughs> that also brings up another very important thing for students, too, is that, you know, we can get way carried away when we start thinking about the design and, and often have to also think about what's realistic. So, like you say, there are so many different areas, let's say, in World of Warcraft, so by all means, focus on one small area and who knows if you do get so motivated you expand from there but but definitely realistic expectations is important for mm -hmm. students because i think it's really important that they end up having something to deliver rather than you know overshooting um but you know that those are the kinds of things we you know learn about time management and all that realistic expectations is important for mike yes Yes. Mike wants to make a big epic World of Warcraft game, and right, right, right. I'm trying to really Mike. Back Mike might not be able to do that. That's right. <laughs> but so let's... if you make the first little area and and have experienced great success, and you know, kind of put some closure and have something that feels like a a, a self contained experience, and then go on and build more, definitely. Um, let's see what you got. Uh, I need. Uh, Kim and Becky to reel me in <laughs> so that we stay on track. <laughs> I know the feeling. We're big. We're big thinkers. We 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 think big, Mike. And uh, that is and exactly good. the way I'm yep. gonna let you frame it. Yep. Ah, uh, some <laughs> more interesting blocks here. These are Whoa. these are neat. They're like kind of. And these are dark, dark blocks. Mm -hmm. Wow! Very cool. Wow, think of the games you could create in this world. Oh, is that a... I wonder if there's, like... Does the lava flow? I don't think the lava flows. But, like, you can do lava, like... So it doesn't flow, but mm. it... You can it is truly like a block. You, you can pretend it flows. Now that is looks like flowing lava, if you ever ask me. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. You did it. Did it. Game, it. game done. Let me, Mike, let me show some of the design document ideas so people could see what that might look like. I have, let's see if I, which screen am I sharing? Am I sharing my main screen? I'm a little bit worried about feedback, but let's see. Yes, one screen. There you go. There go. Am I sharing the one with the wakelet or with the mural board. board okay then here now am i sharing something different mm -hmm. okay so um these are just a few examples of of student written game design documents that i've curated from the projects my kids have done and a lot of them you'll notice have like a very similar um sort of template style to them but i like the kids you know in, in this case we were thinking about what tool they were using 
the storyline is a big part of the design documents my kids come up with. And I really talk about the importance of, of backstory, um, you know, because kids are quick to want to tell you what's going to happen in the game, but not as much about, you know, that there's actually a backstory that's driving it. And then like we talked about in the, in the, what's that thing called? The, 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 the special board we're using? Miro. Miro. We had characters, right? So again, I have the kids come up with descriptions for characters with some abilities, and some go crazy and write paragraphs about their characters, some not as much. Um, you know, we were talking about NPCs. Then levels. What I love to have kids do is write um, level descriptions that are, you know, are well described so I can visualize them. But I also like to have kids draw sketches of their levels. So here's an overall sketch of this kid's idea for the game. But then here are the actual written descriptions so that they're kind of brainstorming that part as well. And they even have cut scenes in theirs. Um, objects, I think somebody before talked about like what kids might they might collect in their games, power-ups and things like that, checkpoints. Um, I was saying before, winning-losing scenario. I like kids to look at things like this too. I have them explore challenges that they anticipate. In other words, like obviously they're not going to solve them right away, but I like them to think about like, hmm, I have this grand idea, but what do I think might be difficult to actually implement in the game? Um, and then these are some of those. And then also I like for them to think about a plan for automation. So my kids, you know, if they're using like, let's say in this case with um, the game maker, um, the sandbox game maker, it's really important for them to um, think about, uh, um, you know, in other words, maybe they saw that there are quests involved. Maybe they perceive that a challenge will be setting up the quest and figuring out how the player is going to, you know, um, complete the quest and, and how that whole system works. So it's like them thinking through that a little. But, um, you know, there are a lot of different ones here. Here I have one, a kid that was um, starting to work with Unreal Engine. And, you know, really, um, that was an interesting one because I think he, you know, he learned a lot. Um, you know, here are some others, some with more uh, descriptive character descriptions, more sketches. Wow. So similar to what we're doing in, um, you know, with um, the, the tool that I'll still forget the name of, um, Miro, Miro. Um, so it's, you know, and you could create a Miro template and have the kids create it in this also if that seems, um, you know, to help them guide their thinking more. But I do think this is such a crucial part of the process. I think I think kids want to just dive in and, and, and it's it's so important the all the different elements of a game and planning that out that I don't think I think it's important that we emphasize that and don't lose sight of that. Totally. The uh the there there's a meadow uh world here. Uh that is that is exactly as you would expect. But you could like you could I could envision putting you know trees, and and stuff mm -hmm. in this, so it would be more like a forest. There is there is um oh I was wondering what that was and now that I'm looking back further it's obviously clouds. Oh that's cool. Uh but yeah there's there's definitely um a neat opportunity here to make like an actual forest. You know, you can you can uh, put trees. Mm -hmm. You could sculpt a bit too, I think, right? Um, depending on what terrain you're using. Yeah, yeah. Those trees look nice. Yes, they do. We could recreate Washington D.C. in um the sandbox. I was gonna say, I, who would who in their right mind would want to recreate Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. That just seems dumb. I don't know. Seems pretty bold and ambitious. <laughs> it seems ridiculous. <laughs> um, yeah, these are nice, and you can. I wonder what it looks like to. Here, let's let's click on play. Curious with the where these. Oh, there they are. Can't cut the trees down. 
and you might be able to change behaviors of them so that mm -hmm. things can happen differently, but I'm not sure. There we go. Pretty cool. That's cool. It's neat how um, you know, immersive it looks once you're in the game versus working on making it. Becky says she could help doing mine, uh, doing doing uh, BC. Yes, she did. Let's look at Ant Arctica. Ant. After Arctica. that, can we look at Uncle Arctica? You are hilarious. I know. I try. I just made that up. In fact, I never even heard that before. I just that was just came right right to me. Right. That's how, that's how witty I can be sometimes. I know, man. I'm gonna miss you. I know. <laughs> we'll, we'll still do stuff though. We'll still study games and do things. I'll let you beta test my my game yes, when it's ready. Yes, I sure will. That that that'll happen. Let's take a look at Antarctica. I imagine it'll have snow. Yeah, you were right. Oh, and it has like cliffs. Hmm. I have no reason to assume that you can't like build these spaces out to even be taller. Like if you that's wanted to build out mountains and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I, I believe you can. That's what I was saying before. I think that you can sculpt what you already have in there, but. I mean, I could be making that up, but I'm pretty sure I recall doing that. There's tons of different blocks and block styles that you can mm. use. Oh, magic. Oh, nothing is done. Let's go to the rock face. So, <laughs> I mean, we haven't gotten into this yet, but this is this is a perfect time since we're here. Mm -hmm. Take a look at all of these assets. Do 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 a quick search for alpaca. I wonder if we find it. Mike, that was the one. No, al, not salpaca. Alpaca. Uh, okay, that's an alpaca. That's not the one that my my student made one and been trying to um. And it's on the marketplace, but I don't know if it's officially available yet. So and so so so, so so some assets are um. Are are sold? Yeah, I'm still not a hundred percent sure because, like, I I think there's something where you can use some of them, but it's when you maybe publish or monetize your game that that becomes a different issue. I let's see what you, what could happen. Let's see if you could take that there and bring it with us. Plus, oh, there's a lot you got to do here to make it happen. Interesting. We're gonna have to dig into how yeah, available yeah. copies. So, so the thing with assets, um, th so there is a whole world of like the, the NFT, mm -hmm. um, cryptocurrency bit. Like, like this asset has a limited quantity of of avail in terms of availability. When creator designs an asset, he has to distribute points among chosen attributes. Um, anyways, it's very cool, and yeah. there's there's tons. And some are more rare than others, which is kind of neat. Yeah, yeah, which is wild. Small alien fern. Skull relic. We're going to have to dig into, like, this whole catalyst epic attributes this whole world and what what these what this means uh for sure i wonder if i connect my google account let's let's try that i'm going to switch back to here i'm going to try this i wonder if i can just input this in hopefully you're adding Tons of incredible ideas to the Miro board. Oh, oh, I am. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm going to write more about the stairs and the basement and the attic. How's that? And I'm going to sign in somehow. 
logged in. All right. There, I logged in. Relic Skull has been successfully added to your inventory. Oh, really? Yeah, now see if you can bring it in the game, because that's the part that's kind of interesting, too. Let's see. So now I go back here. Oh, that just took me to the website. I don't want to go home. I want to. I might be able to go to your inventory. I think it's I think it's I. Right. Of course. Is that one of the ones you can add? No, that didn't have it. We're gonna have to but dig into uh mm -hmm. into some stuff. One of the things that I need to add, I'm we're gonna be adding some this actually this is a great segue to adding um some really cool content that just came out. Um on uh on the on the sandbox side that I'm going to pull up for you as soon as I find it. I thought I had it open before. But seem to go. Oh man, I had it. I had it open. Oh, maybe it's here. There it is. Hmm. The Game Maker Academy. I'm going to link this in the chat for people to uh oh, wow. to take a look at it is still a work in progress by um some some of the sandbox team but it definitely is a great way for you to get started um learning how to use um some aspects of the game maker you know basically you know what is the game maker I'm going to be adding some of this content to the Sandbox 101 course as well. So not only will it be here, but you can actually go to, um, you know, the Sandbox 101 course on Participate uh, and, and earn a digital credential for taking this course. And, and, um, and, and you'll, you'll receive some of the information from this as well. So we're going we're gonna to link to that too. Um, so there's lots of really cool um, pieces in here that you can you can start to to learn how to use the tools. Um, and I definitely need to spend some time in here digging into this as I go as well. So so that's pretty exciting. I'm so excited to dig into all of these all of these different um, assets. There is. So much stuff I think here. The, the community aspect of the sandbox is, you know, what's going to set it apart from certain other, um, you know, building, you know, experiences. Um, and it's like wide open. Like the possibilities are incredible. When I clicked on magic, there was, uh, this is all the stuff that came up. It's cool. There's like a rug crystal platform a warlock gate a shrine ah they, i love that there's um avatars for mm. folks already so like i i wonder like when you when you talked about npcs yeah like there are tons mhm mm well, I mean, think of that contest we did previously, right, where people were creating avatars. Like, those could also easily be then brought into the game. And Box Edit makes it, you know, very reasonable to create. I mean, that one's pretty cool. I don't know that I could create it, but we were learning and messing around. This night protects the realm from all evil, Steve. That's what we need. Right. I know. So, very, very cool. I'm excited about that. So what do we got here? We definitely spend a lot of time on, you know, characters. I think I really feel like this NPC aspect is going to is going to work out. Um, there's definitely potential for non humanoid main characters. What I think I might end up doing is linking 
um, some of the cool kind of non-humanoid main characters that I like. Because it looks to me like I can mm -hmm. go to, you know, so Buddhist monk. I can click on this. I'm going to, I could take this link and I could come back here and I could, yeah. I could, I could go like this and I could paste it. Yeah, you could do it too. You could. Oh, you look could, at that! Oh, that's nice. Oh boy, that's cool. So I could like bring in a whole bunch of them, and mm -hmm. I wonder if I can link them to. Anyways, uh, maybe I could put them all down here, and then and then when you click on it, it takes you right to wow, it. Wow, that's cool. That's a good. That's great. So maybe I'll I'll look through and and uh, I I might enlist some help some of from some of our friends in the chat to contribute to this Miro board with me. Um I I, I do love the idea of making this game with other people, uh mm -hmm. not just myself. So um may enlist some 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 help. Um and then we'll we'll uh get this Miro board completely um you know filled up with information over the next uh two weeks. Um, and then we'll uh, be back um, with the next assignment. What is the next assignment? That is a great question. The initial game proposal. So I'm excited to talk about that in in um, two weeks. Steve Isaac. Yes. So awesome. With that, we are done for the day. Um, you will be able to find this video. It will be embedded in the brainstorming course mm -hmm. on participate soon. Um, the the activity process journal video will be also embedded soon. Uh, I had some technical difficulties with it. It will be there shortly um, as well so that you can come back and look at these anytime. Uh, they'll be linked from uh, in inside the course. Um, so that's exciting. You had something that you exciting. wanted to say. Well, I was just thinking, like, yeah, like, I mean, look at these great resources that I hope people are understanding that, um, you know, the stream is just here to kind of introduce the content, but the everybody's participation in these courses is what's going to make this all very exciting and, and yeah. let us share our work and all that kind of stuff and engage in the process together. Yeah, totally. All right, everybody. So two weeks from now, 4 o'clock, initial game proposal. We will show more of the brainstorm, I think. Because uh, we're just getting started there, and um, and we are on the way. We we took a look at the game maker, saw a lot of really cool ideas, got inspired. I have I I feel like I feel like after an hour, less than an hour, I have a a much better idea of the game um, that I'm gonna make than I did before, and that is literally the whole point of brainstorming. Um, so. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks to the Sandbox for creating the tool and giving us the resources to share this. Uh, thanks to Mr. Isaac for joining us. And we will see y'all in two weeks. Have a good one. Take care.